So this brings to a conclusion the Digital Technologies modules. I hope you have found them useful in preparing to teach this new subject. We have started from a pedagogical perspective, using student-centred project-based learning to draw together a way in which your students can engage with the content of the curriculum and utilise the technologies they have available to them to develop solutions to real-world problems. In doing so, the course has framed projects around the development of higher-order thinking skills, as exampled in the student solutions. But this comprehensive approach is hard to get your head around, particularly for a subject you are new to, and you should not feel that it is the only approach. You may choose to use the activities and the resources presented in these modules to focus on the content of the curriculum, addressing learning outcomes in separate activities and lessons. Or you may choose to focus on the technology, framing your student's study around the learning of a programming language or a particular robotics kit. Each offer advantages and disadvantages, and an effective program of study will use a combination of all three. And whichever approach you start with, you should aim to bring together the pedagogies, the content, and the technologies that you use in ways that support each other and maximise the opportunities for your students to learn about and engage with digital technologies. But learning and teaching are always a journey and each year you will add to the pedagogical strategies, the content knowledge and your familiarity with new technologies. But for teachers from F to 6, we have covered the entire curriculum and the activities and concepts presented should provide you with all you need to start supporting student learning at these levels. For 7 to 10, you should now have an understanding of what is involved in the curriculum and where you need to develop greater understanding, particularly in learning a programming language and a query language, both to a level that you can support students in doing likewise. Now, of course, you will learn so much more when you put this learning into practice, developing project activities and tasks with and for your students. And the resources and technologies to support you will continue to develop, with a wide range of textbooks and curriculum guides in development at the moment that will be available shortly. The Digital Technologies Hub by Education Services Australia is the main federal government initiative to coordinate these activities. And we also have the Queensland Coding Academy doing so at a local level. And if you feel that you still need a more structured and guided preparation to teach digital technologies, there are the C2C resources developed for each year level, and these provide specific learning activities that you can use with students. And for those of you wishing to explore the curriculum from other perspectives, there are a set of free online courses available from the Computer Science Education Research Group. Now we wish you the very best in your teaching of this exciting new curriculum. It is a big challenge and you are to be commended on being proactive in preparing for this challenge. From the many innovative responses to the activities that you have completed during the course, your students are going to have a great time learning about the digital technologies in fun and engaging ways. And I really look forward to seeing the wonderful approaches you develop to shape student learning in this subject over the years to come. So all the very best and thank you for participating in the course.